Well, welcome back into the studio. Today we're gonna do a Technique Tuesday. This is called a mixed media serigraph background. And it's a, traditionally it is a stamping technique, but we're gonna apply it today to an art journal, but it can be applied to canvases, etc. anything really. So the first thing you're gonna do is you need to get some stamps together. So you're gonna want something with a lot of texture, um, you want a mid-grade, something that doesn't have a ton of texture, and you're going to want something that has a bold focal, focal point. So I've got my stamps out here to the side, and then you're going to also want to gather up some ink pads. So the first thing we're going to start off with is the Versamark or some kind of embossing ink pad. And you're going to start off with three to four... Um, ink pad colors and three to four embossing colors. Uh, the first one we want to go with is our lightest color. So your clear or a white. And in this case, I'm using a white. And you're going to use that on the first image, your textural um, stamp. So I've done that and I've heat set that. And now I'm going in with my second stamp. Now this is a mid-grade stamp and I'm using something that's pretty small and I'm using two different images for this um, second set. And I'm just kind of randomly stamping them around um, the layout. And then we're gonna go in with a mid-tone embossing powder. So I really matched my embossing powders and my inks together and I'll get into the inks here in a little bit. First, we gotta do all the embossing. So I'm putting down my mid um, color of embossing powder and then I'm gonna get shake that off and I'm going to heat set that. Um, a little tip for you when you can't see what where you've stamped things, um, you can sprinkle it out and that powder will catch it and you can then uh, see it easier, but you can also look at it sideways and catch the glossiness. So here you're going to see I'm going to really just use my finger to push off some excess um, embossing powder, but you can also use a round brush. That also works very well. And then we're going to get that heat set. And then we're going to go in with our bold focal point stamp. And in this case, I'm going to use um, these circular um, stamps over here on my right. And again, into the uh, Versamark and stamping the images. Now, you're going to not to be, want um, to use as many of these um, and... Um, as you did before. And you definitely want to position these um, for a focal. So you'll see here, I'm taking the smaller ones and kind of randomly stamping them around and then taking that larger one and I'm gonna make that more of my focal point. And then we're gonna come in with embossing powder again. And this time it's gonna be our darkest color. And in this case, I'm using black. And then again, we're gonna go ahead and heat set that. All right, so now you want to gather up your three to four ink pads. Um, and you wanna use something relatively in the same family and definitely have light to dark. So we're gonna start brayering our lightest color down onto the layout. And this can be totally random. You can use water-based, dye-based, distress, inks or archival. If you do use a water base or a distress ink, then you definitely are going to have to use 
um, a fixative because you don't want it moving around on you. But if you do end up using an archival, then you wouldn't have to do that. So I'm going down with my lightest color and you're gonna see here, I do struggle a bit with the left hand side page because that's the back side of another layout that had a lot of texture on it but it really adds to the page but you can see that I'm definitely having to do a, a firmer briaring um, to get that color down so next you want to make sure you get your brayer really cleaned off well from that ink color and you're gonna go into um, your second color which should be your uh, second lightest um, your mid color and you're gonna get that brayer down randomly as well and you can have crossover as long as your colors play nice with each other um, then you shouldn't have any problem getting some crossover um, on that and um, you're gonna get that laid down wherever you choose to get it um, to lay it down the neat thing about this technique it's definitely you never get the same thing you can there's so many different variables that you can definitely um, get some different things going on so again cleaning off the brayer and now we're going to pull our third ink pad out and this is going to be our darkest color and um, get that brayer down just like we did the first ones. Now if you hadn't seen down below in the description box is a list of all the items that I've used, all the supplies I've used, as well as a link to this technique's instruction sheet. Once we get that brayer cleaned off after brayering all this color on, our third ink color, you're going to grab your acrylic paint. Now you should have selected at least two colors. Um, a bold color, which is going to be our pop to draw your eye in, and either a white or a black to push other areas black back. Now because I did use water-based um, inks, I need to spray the page down with some fixative. So in this case I'm using Spectra Fix and I'm giving that a very good light coat. I prefer to use three coats, so I put one down, dry it with my heat tool, a second, dry it with my heat tool, and a third. That way I have found that I don't get as, uh, as much movement. For my pop of color, I have chosen to mix some colors together. So I'm doing that on the side. And then for my color that I've chosen to push areas back, I'm gonna go with the white. And because this is a mostly lighter layout. So I'm getting that color mixed and then I'm gonna go in and start to apply that. This is really um, to enhance the focal point. I'm going to apply it in an area where I can draw the eye of the viewer from one side of the layout through the layout. So in this case, from left to right. So I'm drawing the eye across from the upper left hand corner or thereabouts over to the right to my focal point, which is that largest circle. If you're enjoying the Technique Tuesday series and have other techniques that you would like me to present, uh, please don't hesitate. Um, leave me a comment on this video and I'd be happy to take those into consideration.
Now I'm going in with my titanium white and I'm going to push areas back. Now this is really subjective, so you have to decide what feels right for you um, when you're working on the layout. Um, there's no science to it really. Um, for me, it's it's just how the piece feels. I do a lot of my work with my fingers because I like to have that connection with the substrate. And um, you'll see that I go in sometimes and pull color back off with my towel. Um, and so like I said, it is very subjective. Sometimes it's about what is needs to be balanced, how to balance a piece. Sometimes it's about shape. So there's a lot of different things that will affect where you're going to um, push back areas or how you're gonna push back areas. Alright, so now this piece feels like it's primarily done. The background is done and I am going to create um, a focal point with a saying on it. So I'm just doing some layering of different elements out of my, <clears throat> excuse me, giblet basket. So I have the uh, baby wipes that I use to clean off my brayer and I'm pulling some of that in it will mimic some of the color it will so that will help it feel like it's part of this piece and then i have this really interesting gauzy like ribbon stuff and i think that uh, michelin actually uh, gifted this to me and um so i'm going to layer that up and put a saying on it and apply that to the page as my main focal point. So the color, that pop of color just pulls you in, drags you down to that larger circle which is the only one on the page and to um, the sentiment. Now over on my right side is my sewing machine and so I am going to take this over and put some stitches in it. Mm -hmm. 